Hi, before I walk everyone around for the first auction of Clark's 2013 New Year, I would just like to wish everyone a happy and peaceful New Year. And if we get a little bit of prosperity, we'll be grateful also. With that, I'm going to show you this is beautiful little 19th century uh, inlaid miniature cabinet, nice with the ivory inlay. We have a lot of good custom made used furniture. Normally I'm not a used furniture person, but we have a lot of good custom furniture by a company called Beacon Hill, which is quite popular. We have this pair of upholstered wing chairs. 20th century, but also beautiful. We have this Adam style inlaid sideboard, great quality. As we're walking along, you'll notice with the art on the walls, Nelia's having a well-deserved well holiday, and I wish her the best and hope she's really enjoying that. So I'm gonna to have to deal with some of her art. This is a beautiful oil and canvas by an American artist called Enoch Perry. I can relate to this because I now have a one and a half year old son who sits at me like that while I'm reading. Uh, so that's a beautiful painting, quite rare to the market and fresh to the market from a Mount Vernon estate. From the same estate, we have this beautiful and large primitive oil and canvas. Nice girl there with the dog and the flower. Good for the American market. This is a porcelain urn on stand on a nice bronze stand, beautiful quality it's as a topiary, decorative. Staying with art, over here we have this good looking little girl. It's a painting by George Knowles. It's an oil on canvas. And up here from a Park Avenue, so it's a small little discovery we didn't realize that we got closer onto it, is by George Inns, a nice little landscape signed lower right, and that's from Park Avenue today. I know Bruce has dealt with the Asian stuff, so we come over quickly, we have this Nice pair of pedestal sort of knife cabinets, Adam style and satin wood. Sitting on top of this here is this beautiful, very fine quality 19th century cut glass empire bronze mounted urn. Before we move along on the back wall, we have a very rare uh, print by Romar Beard, an African American artist, but this, this one hasn't come to the market yet. We have a pencil sign print here by Dali. We have uh, pencil sign print also by mirror. If you remember last sale, we got 36,000 for a mural. It was quite a rare one. Up here, we have a very fine landscape by a French artist called De Closade. Sort of Irish style nearly there, but like a Paul Henry. In the abstract and more contemporary, we have two small paintings by Mark Toby. These actually went through Christie's about 15 years ago. So he's, he's come along on the market since then. And two, two uh, of my favorites in the sale, we have from uh, Mount Vernon, say we've this beautiful watercolor here. Let me just have a look down there by an artist called Frederick Smallfield, an English artist, but very fine looking. You see the newspapers on the wall and the flowers and the beautiful look on the little girl. Staying with the English watercolors, probably as good as she was, probably as good looking in her day, but she's elder a little now. This is by Walter Langley, another magnificent watercolor. Just look at the quality in it. English artist, very desirable. Up above it, we have another Mark Toby abstract also went through Christie's many years ago. And right in the middle, just to keep the uh, differences, we have this very large old master, wonderful quality, it's a nativity scene. You can see it's dark and they're bringing the frankincense and myrrh and you've got all the figures. And you even have a camel up here, it's hard to see. It's in as found condition, it's got some cracklure and some flaking, but this down here, I think whenever it's cleaned will will expose the original painting. I think this is more in the varnish, so it's, it could be quite nice when it's restored. Now to the, my favorite thing in the sale, this also came from the Mount Vernon State. This is an Italian Roman micro mosaic. It's by an artist called Cavri Cavaliere Tullia Moglia. It's got its details on the back. It was in the great exhibition in 1859. We found it we found the exhibition catalog and I believe, and we did find that this was in the exhibition. We have the lot number and the catalog. Very, very fine, six to 9,000, and we think it'll do very well. Below this, we have a satin board sideboard. This is part of a set. We have a table and chairs inside, but a beautiful quality with the rosewood banding on the edge. And sitting atop over here is a very fine little painting, it's, I believe it's Austrian, but it's sort of in the style of Thomas Hart Benton. Very fine quality, it's on copper. We don't know who it is, but it does have this old label on the back. This is fresh to market as well, it came from a Park Avenue estate. Now, right over here, before we go into the main room, we have this magnificent Regency Rosewood marble top game table. Beautiful with the gilding work on it and the nice swirling feet. Look at all this Pieta Dura work up here, old marble. Regency. 
Before we go into the main room, Steve, we have this beautiful giltwood mirror. It's a reproduction by a company called Colonial, sort of similar to Beacon Hill and Baker, but of you know, the newer reproduction, so very desirable because it's such good quality. Moving into the main room, we're going to whip through this fairly quick, Steve. We have this nice black lacquer and red leather insert, French 20th century bureau plat, nice quality. Right alongside here, we have a beautiful carved giltwood Louis XV style berger. I'm going to walk along here quickly. We have a little Beacon Hill dinette set in the Empire style. Up here, we have great 20th century modern mirrors. Noticing as we move along, plenty of art, Steve. Here we have a magnificent, what I believe is a Saruk, estate carpet, estate fresh. Here we have a pair of 20th century Sheraton style one drawer consoles. Decorators like them, it's signed, I'm not sure of the maker on this. Up here, quite interesting, we don't know who it is, but it's an artist called Ben Hollis, and it looks like I would say a Harlem scene. You can see all the African-Americans there and what's going on in the streets. That's quite nice, especially I think next month is African-American month, history month. Coming along here, Steve, we have this painting came from a New York City estate on East 57th Street. It reminds me a lot of an Irish artist called Paul Henry with the billowing clouds and the scenery down here, but it's by an artist called Gertrude Whiting McKim. No auction records for her, but she, she was quite an important teacher of art, and this, I think this is particularly nice. Maybe not financially, but certainly to the eye. This small little painting of the dog here is, I believe it's a dachshund, but it's a, by an artist called Rousseau, who, of the animal uh, dog painters, he's one of the best. Uh, another nice quality painting is this painting of a Judaica painting with all the rabbis sitting at the table. Very nice quality, small size. Came from the same house as the micro mosaic. Moving along, Steve, notice we got plenty of needlepoint carpets. <coughs> we have this very fine carpet here, estate fresh from East 57th Street also. Before we move along, we have this very large landscape by an artist called Wimperus. We've had Wimperus before, it's done quite, and he's done quite well with us, but this is a different scene. Also has sort of an Irish feel to it, those big rain clouds coming at you. This is a very nice painting by a Westchester artist called Reggie Klein. No artist, no auction listing on it, but a very nice painting. He just hasn't come to the market. As we're moving along here, Steve, we have this signed Beacon Hill, Sheraton style, tambour front secretary bookcase. For all you people wanting to stock up on used furniture, nice, this is of the best, and it's a good time because the market still hasn't really kicked in, but it could, and I'm optimistic, and I think this is going to be a great year, even though I lost my house in the storm, I think we're going to have a great year. This is also a beautiful little, uh, I would call it a campaign style bachelor's chest, leather top by Beacon Hill. These aren't by Beacon Hill, but these are sort of early 20th century, but they're very useful. They're, look at the wood on a beautiful burl wall, not their side locks. We would say Victorian. <coughs> beautiful. And the fact that we have a pair, they're great because if you're in a high bed and you want to put a telephone on them or the, the lingerie, etc., etc. Over here, Steve, we have two paintings by American artists. One's Rockport artist. This is Louis Ritter. I believe it's a coastal scene in Capri. Nice painting, you could do with the cleaning, it's a state fresh. Below here we have an, art, an American artist, Charles Green, it's of uh, what they would call seaweed fishermen. Also, a little as is, a state fresh. Moving right along, Steve, note we have plenty of chandeliers. This is a beautiful, beautiful uh, break front here with a nice broken arch top, but individual panes, you can see here, plenty of room for viewing for your books or your china. And here from the East 57th Street, a pair of 18th century continental portraits. She's a good looking girl, depending on the time of day. And this is obviously her brother or her husband over here. Has a similar look. We can certainly tell this family there. Moving over here, Steve, note we have 20th century pairs of mirrors. This is a beautiful, beautiful painting here by an artist called Jean Cosson. It's a ballerina, but in the Dega style. Up above it fresh to the market and beautiful little oil on panel, a snow scene, which is good for this time of year by John E. Carlson. Beautiful little painting. I'll let you focus on other paintings, but we'll, we don't have the time to catch them all. But here's a particularly nice painting here by an artist called Claudeau. Very impressionist, but you can see the woman with the dog inside there. And this painting here, I really like. We have quite a few by this artist. Once again, a new artist, no listing by an artist called Ettinger. 
some nice lots of maizen porcelain. We, that's maizen there. This is maizen here. We have lalique, plique jour. We have a set of 12 oyster plates. We have some Staffordshire, lots and lots of stuff. And with that, I'm gonna get on my penny farthing bicycle and I'm gonna cycle off into the new year and we'll see you on January the 6th at 2 p.m. Hand you over to Bruce. Thanks, Ron, and we'll start our video walk through here with a beautiful antique Serapi rug or Hariz. It's actually a Hariz, really late 19th, early 20th century. Beautiful pattern, nice age, a beautiful carpet in good condition. I know there's a lot of reproductions, but these are 18th century Dutch, I guess, pharmaceutical jars, number five and number six, signed by the factory that make them, sort of a faience pottery. And here a lot of herond. Several bronzes in the auction, a signed French bronze. Beautiful woman here. And an unsigned lion that's terrific quality. It's as good as Barry. So far, we don't find any signature or foundry marks on it. And several lots of English porcelain, including this Mason's iron stone in really excellent condition, a deep well platter and four plates. Some Copeland, I think, or maybe it's Derby, quite a lot of Derby. There's some damage to some of it being sold in large lots. Asian porcelain, as the market dictates its hotness, a pair of iron red candlesticks, a pair of Satsuma vases, probably mid 20th century, but beautiful quality. More English porcelain. Not quite sure what this one is, Steve. We cataloged it as Chinese, but it might be Samson. In either event, it's a beautiful, at least 19th, if not 18th century vase. I think it's Chinese on a French bronze mounted base. Beautiful collection of Bohemian glass here. Really exquisitely engraved, if you can see the detail of that cut to clear. A large lot of it, several different patterns, birds. There's Steuben, there's Waterford. A beautiful enameled set, signed Barovier. Kind of an Austrian secessionist style design. Little finger bowls out of a house in Summers. And, and here a big porcelain set, Royal Worcester in nearly unused condition. Big, there's at least a service for 12 here with extra pieces. And a beautiful mid-century Chinese carpet here, small room size, eight by 10 or so, in really good condition. And here an antique table, we're thinking it might, 18th century, we're thinking it might be Irish, this gate leg table with this carved knees, sort of shell carved knees and stylized pad feet. It's hard to, hard to see this given this little space, but a good antique mahogany table. And here a carved mahogany, probably late 19th century, possibly Irish parlor set, settee, two armchairs, two side chairs with beautiful attention to detail with the eagle's heads, fully carved splats with the tassel back. Probably a copy of an important 18th century Irish set. And here an interesting item that I actually never heard of before, a 17th century English sword chest, kind of like a coffer, but designed to hold swords. It makes perfect sense. And I'm told it's quite a rare piece of furniture to come along. And here an antique uh, 19th century, turn of the century, bamboo altar table, but a nice antique one sort of what they call Brighton Pavilion furniture. We have two hardwood 19th century Chinese etagers in this auction, uh, both beautifully carved. I'll show you the other one, or Ron will show you the other one. It's in the foyer of the, of, of the entrance of the gallery. But it's such beautiful quality. And here a little antique satinwood, probably English 
satin wood and mahogany, English bow front or cupid's front, chest of drawers on high, high French feet. It's an, in unfortunate but restorable condition. And from the same house, at least a 19th century French kingwood marquetry and inlaid three drawer commode. Beautiful design and very nicely made. Original hardware, original sort of directoire mounts here, or Louis XVI style mounts. And probably the nicest Chinese rug we've ever had. It's certainly a turn of the century, oversized Chinese, maybe a Peking style rug. It's a little dirty, but it's in magnificent condition and pile, just needs a cleaning. I hope you can see the detail of the iconography on it. It's just wonderful with the little brush pots and little bonsai trees. And it might be signed here with these little initials. I see that in two places, approximately 13 by 16. And from a local house in Scarsdale, a beautiful quality English style tilt top table, breakfast table with brass inlay and specimen or exotic inlay wood top. X Christie's, there's an old Christie's label on the back of it, but we got it straight out of a house in New Rochelle or Scarsdale, I think. And around it, a set of 10 antique sort of Egyptian revival chairs. I think they've been, the, the faux graining has been refreshed and I'm not so sure about these little gilded feet and Egyptian heads, but nevertheless, a nice set of antique, 10 antique chairs out of a house in Summers is quite a lot of antique period Jacobean style furniture, including this chest of drawers, four drawer, and this chest of drawers over here. Same sort of idea with the split balustrade front. This is a three drawer. Several good pair of French sconces, including this pair with ram's heads. First, the original doré finish that's dirty. And over here, a pair of quiver, of quiver of arrows with a bow knot top. Same thing, turn of the century French. Nice size on these. Original finish, good condition. And out of the Scarsdale house, an antique English Sheridan server with lion's head hardware. A bit of a rarity here, Steve, a, a Sinumbra or Astral, I think a Sinumbra lamp with its original cut glass mushroom shade. Might be Cornelius out of Philadelphia, unmarked. And more antique furniture, including this 18th century French, very rural country two drawer commode. All original condition, a nice color. And while we're on commodes from the same house in Summers, they had very good taste in this house. Is this late 18th century? I suppose it's French. It was cataloged as French, but I'm thinking it might be Italian. It's rural, whatever it is, with an inlaid top that needs a little bit of work, but a beautiful bow front commode, antique one, exotic wood inlays, just a nice piece of antique furniture. And a set of seven, at least 19th century, but fully developed, they might even be 18th century, fully developed Chippendale dining room chairs, two armchairs, five side chairs, again with the bird splat back. And if you'll note the little bird heads on the return, on the leg return, the same bird head. Just a handsome set of Chippendale chairs. An antique Sheridan mirror, probably about 1810, but I think it was painted around 1880 or 1890. Another pair of gilt bronze sconces, bugle form, probably French again. Most of them are. 
And here an antique first period Sheridan Heppel White serpentine front sideboard inlaid with probably holly, but has beautiful original hardware. Needs a little bit of cabinet work on these front drawers, but a nice antique server of a small size. A mid-century Eames Rosewood lounge chair in sort of as found condition, but the reality is that it's not that bad at all. There doesn't seem to be any veneer damage. It's gonna need some upholstery work. The buttons have popped out, but it's all here, including the ottoman, the backrests. It just needs to be reassembled, and I think a lot of the leather can be salvaged. Maybe just the, the seat of the chair and the ottoman have to be redone. And out of our, our, out of our Newburgh estate, an 18th century, I think 18th century, maybe 17th century, and it's probably had some alterations along the way, but maybe a, a Dutch, a big massive Dutch or continental oversized two drawer knee hole desk with sort of a plank top and original hardware. A very interesting piece of furniture. And this piece of furniture is sitting up from the same estate is sitting on a probably a French or Spanish Savonnerie carpet, handmade vintage carpet, nicely woven, and in full pile, probably just needs a little bit of a cleaning. And again from the same estate, just one of many antique needle points. You don't see these so much anymore. This is an oversized one at 11 foot nine by 15 and in nearly perfect condition. Maybe some edges need to be rebound, but it's in extraordinary condition and color. Out of a local Larchmont house, we have two boxes of books. This one is all by Isaac Asimov and a great majority of them are signed by Asimov himself. You can go to our website to see the details. And just came in today, Steve, a woman walked in with it. it, is a fairly rare book called Mexican People, 12 Original Signed Lithographs by Artists of the Taller de Grafica, Popular Mexico City. All artists signed prints. I'm not gonna bore you with each one of these. 19, 1940s. Anyway, it's in great condition for people that like Mexican lithographs. This came out of a a rye, a local rye house. We think it to be 17th century. We're just calling it antique, but it was previously appraised as 17th century Chinese, a, a bodhisattva figure. Maybe the base is 19th century and this came out of a temple. It's missing a bit of paint, but has a beautiful face and great attention to detail with the Rui scepter in his hand. And out of the same house, a China, 19th century Chinese hardwood etagere. We don't know what kind of wood this is, and we certainly don't want to say it's Zeton, but we can hardly pick it up. And it's of just beautiful, beautiful quality, wonderful design, and clearly 19th century. And my last item today, Steve, will be this partial suit of armor, Japanese, lacquer, iron, cloth, with beautiful raised relief lacquer dragon on the front, the mask front, the helmet. It's in unfortunate condition, but I think it's probably a 17th century one. We'll know soon enough. There's already quite a bit of interest in it. That concludes my section of the video walkthrough and I'll turn it over to Keen. We look forward to seeing you here on January 6th. All right, thanks Bruce. Okay, so I'll show you some of the mid-century items that we have, some of the art, some of the bronzes, some of the furniture. Uh, we'll start right here with the Salvador Dali Alma de Quixote bronze, the soul of uh, Don Quixote. Comes with an authentic certificate of authentication. Um, it's signed on the bottom as well as the base. Very nice lines to it, very unique piece. It's a casting 143 of 300, and that's also marked on the piece. 
Okay, so up next we have a Luis Samuels, a Spanish artist, a bronze figure looking to the skies. Once again, another uh, very nice lines on this, very well cast. You can see all the way around. It's a uh, very indicative of his kind of style. This is lotted with another piece of art of uh, Jesus Christ and the Apostles. Moving right along, we have a Fornicetti, a Milanese uh, artist, a old uh, mid-century trash can that's in very, very good condition. You can see uh, all the decorations with the cat and the books in the library. Also signed on the bottom, a label of Fornicetti's. Moving along to this beautiful table, it is a oak and very heavy cast iron uh, base by uh, Gregorio uh, Pineo. And if I'm getting that name wrong, just refer back to the website. Uh, right on top of this is a beautiful pair of possibly light O'Lear sconces with glass rods. Each of these glass rods are individual. Will look really beautiful. I'm sure that the light would reflect quite gorgeously off of these when I put them on a the wall. We have a very rare Lewis Comfort Tiffany uh, glazed uh, art pottery. Very rare selection, beautiful, still in great condition. No chips, scratches, or cracks. Uh, moving up here, we have a un unidentified, um, it seems to be unsigned piece of Art Nouveau uh, glass, probably European, um, but it definitely is glass, very unique, very nice lines, and very nice design on this as well. Also in the glass selection, we have a bowl, nice and sized carved bowl by uh, Lalique. Um, it's one of the uh, better uh, pieces you'll find uh, with bird decoration. You can kind of see on the inside, uh, maybe swallows or sparrows, I'm not quite sure, but they are uh, very, very beautifully decorated. So another bronze that we have is this remarkable piece, very big, very heavy, uh, bronze cast on a marble separate base. It is a figural grouping of a woman kissing a soldier, presumably going off to war, or maybe returning. This uh, actual bronze is signed by A. Vanetti, and the base is signed uh, by Bigazzi. So two different signatures on this, um, but you could definitely attribute the uh, bronze itself to A. Vanetti. Very nice piece, very, uh, like I said, very heavy once again, but uh, a great uh, addition to uh, any collection of bronze. It really stands out. Okay, so here's a uh, Johns Gibbons uh, upholstered and lacquered mid-century chair. Beautiful condition, good weight to it. No damage, no cracks or uh, splits to the wood. Uh, very comfortable as well. And speaking of comfort, we have this chaise lounge, uh, unattributed, but it definitely has that mid-century feel uh, with the chrome, black leather. Uh, once again, very comfortable, very mid-century lines and, and look to it. So you could definitely, uh, definitely see some of the mid-century aspects to it. Very well crafted. All right, thank you, and I'll uh, shoot you to Whitney right now. Thank you, Keen. And I'm going to begin the preview of our sales jewelry and sterling with this vintage platinum diamond ring. It has a center stone of approximately a half carat. And for anyone who's curious, it is approximately a size six and a quarter. Next, we have a sterling Wright Brothers model plane in this beautiful display case. On the second shelf here, I'm going to show you a three-piece toll tea set, creamer, sugar, and teapot. Next, we have this set of four beautiful neoclassical design candlesticks. And for anyone who knows marks, there is an unidentified mark in the candle cup, a kind of leaf form. They are quite beautiful. This is a lot of Tiffany, a footed tray with some Tiffany sterling flatware. Here we have a Tiffany water pitcher, quite beautiful in the design, needs to be clean, but it is quite exquisite. And here we have a very rare doorstop that is by Hubbard and also by a, a maker named Fish. I'm not sure if you can see here, but it is marked here with the maker. And then as usual, I'm going to end with, we have a variety of flatware sets by various makers. You can check our website for any additional information on these sets. And that about wraps it up, and I hope to see you here on January 6th at 2 p.m. Thank you.